Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Hodari, the world's properest and most wisest paleo artist. Wise as in an owl, which is the animal I'm gonna be painting today. But it is not any owl, this is a creature that is half mythology and half reality. And perhaps no bird has captured human imagination as the owl. It's got that apparently wide and flat face and those huge front-facing eyes. It kind of reminds us of ourselves a little bit, but at the same time it is an alien creature, a silent predator of the night, long associated with witchcraft, spirits, ghosts, you name it. It is active during the night when we are sleeping, and in short, it just doesn't look like any other kind of bird. So it really shouldn't be surprising that the owl has been inspiring artists since prehistoric times. This is one of the earliest examples we know of a depiction of an owl. It was found in France and it is believed to have been etched on rock 30,000 years ago or more. You can clearly see that the artist was impressed by the owl's ability to rotate its head 270 degrees on any direction to compensate for the eyes being so big that they cannot move within their sockets. One of many adaptations that have made owls both fascinating and a little bit eerie to humans. Throughout history, owls have inspired all sorts of superstition. The ancient Greeks and Romans, for example, believed in the Strix, a kind of giant grey-winged bird with front-facing staring eyes and a taste for human flesh, particularly that of children. And this is eerily similar to the stories of giant man-eating owls found all across North America. From the Choctaw to the Apache to the Nahua people in Mexico, indigenous people had plenty of stories about giant monsters that looked like owls and preyed on humans. And usually, children were also its preferred victims. We have to wonder then, where do all these stories about man-eating owls come from? Now, some could argue that owls are strange enough in their own right to inspire all of these superstitions, but what if there is more to the story? In the 1970s, paleontologist Alexander Wedmore described a series of bones found at Lads, Georgia in the southern United States. Among those fossils were those of a bird that still exists today but is no longer found in that region. It is a pheasant-like bird known as the spruce grouse, today found in the northernmost United States and in Canada, so its presence at LADS suggests that these fossils come from the late Pleistocene during a glacial period, in other words, these are Ice Age fossils. And alongside with the spruce grouse fossils, there were also those of an owl. This owl could not be classified as any living species for one very simple reason, it was way too big. Bigger in fact than any modern day owl species, and that is saying a lot. The largest owls of our day, such as the Eurasian Eagle Owl or the Blackstone's Fish Owl, can reach a wingspan of about 2 meters or 6.5 feet. These are already pretty formidable predators, but even they would have been dwarfed by the Ice Age Owl. Now, unfortunately, those fossils are very fragmentary and to my knowledge, they have not been formally described. But there are some things that we can infer from the fossils. For example, they appear to come from something similar to the wood owls of genus Strix. Yes, they were named after the Greek and Roman mythological creature. So we can at least attempt a reconstruction of this prehistoric owl. Modern-day Strix owls lack the ear tufts or horns of other kinds of owls, and they have bark-like plumage to camouflage themselves among trees during the day. Most of them are nocturnal, and they feed on any small animal that they can overpower, but at such size, our owl may have been preying on larger animals. The Ice Age Owl would have been the nocturnal equivalent of a large eagle, so let's imagine it hunting one of the larger animals that lived alongside it. At the same sites, the fossils of a long-nosed peccary known as Milohyus have been found. Now, there's no denying that Milohyus would have been a very dangerous animal to attack, but let's just go crazy with it. Perhaps juvenile Milohyus and those that were weakened for some reason would have been a target for the giant owl. Thanks to special feathers on its wings, the giant owl would have been able to swoop down on prey completely undetected because of how silent it was, and its giant talons would have been bigger than the hand of a man. 
Large owls today are said to have a grip equivalent to the bite force of a large dog, so imagine the damage that a giant owl could do to prey with those huge talons. Now, our giant owl is taking a huge risk by attacking this Milohyus. For starters, peccary are among the animals that are known to return and help their fallen comrades. And at 70 kilograms, Milohyus was in the same size range as an adult human being, too heavy for even a giant owl to fly away with. Modern birds of prey, however, are known to hunt prey much bigger than they can carry. They just have to eat on the ground. The owl's best bet would be to kill the Milohyus very quickly and then fly away until the herd leaves. Interestingly, Lats, Georgia is not the only place in mainland North America where the remains of giant owls have been found. In the Mexican state of Nuevo León, there is a fossil site known as Cueva de San Josecito, which has yielded the remains of many Ice Age animals, including some that are no longer found in Mexico today, such as marmots or even lemmings. And amongst them, there were also the remains of owls, bigger than any known from the region today. It seems likely to me that giant owls may have been an important element of the Ice Age faunas in mainland North America, one that has yet to be described scientifically. The first humans to arrive to the continent would have found its forests haunted by these formidable nocturnal predators. And it makes a lot of sense to me that the owls would target primarily children whenever they attacked humans simply because of their smaller size. But just like Milo Hyos, humans were not very keen to see their children devoured. Here's the interesting part. Some of the folklore from indigenous North Americans, such as the Chiricahua people, actually speak of the giant owl monster as a creature of the past, and they say that their ancestors had to exterminate it before the land could be safe for their descendants. So this may be a cultural memory of the times in which their ancestors actually coexisted with a prehistoric giant owl. Many Ice Age creatures may have been exterminated by humans because they were overhunted for food, but the giant owl may have been a case in which it was actively persecuted because of the danger it posed. Understandable, but still tragic, because it would have been such a spectacular sight. And so we get to the end of this video. Now, there is more to be said about giant prehistoric owls, but I think I will leave that for later. For now, leave me a comment, tell me if you believe that the giant Ice Age owl may have been a thing, and whether there are superstitions about owls where you live. Until next time, Never lose that sense of wonder.